not, um, when they're not comfortable with it, we act as a facilitator so to enable them that ease of access. And we conducted mediation and litigation on several issues as well. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, one of the other things that happened was as because of being so, so closely connected to the community, Shoki sort of became the primary point of contact for the community members during any emergencies. So during fire hazards or any sort of eviction threats, they would probably be the first point of contact, and that's how we ended up providing them with emergency support and uh, medical aid as well during these emergencies. The other thing that we did in Shoki, as you can see from the photo, is we started providing them with skill building uh, training. Shoki has been such a model under development on its own that we started providing them with first basic skills such as sewing. But eventually, with changing times, we started providing them with rather unconventional um, skill building uh, training such as driving, photography, workshops with photographers, as well as computer coding. And that's led to some success with some of the girls actually making some um, development with software applications. Um, the other thing that we did was also empower them to be able to physically defend themselves by providing them with self-defense trainings. And this was done in partnership with a female empowerment movement. And this, the change makers who were trained eventually also um, spread, this, uh, spread this knowledge and the training to other community members. We did, um, the change makers were trained to do a number of other things such as uh, drama, to uh, for the community street performances on ending sexual violence and gender-based violence. And of course, one of the biggest successes of the project, as I personally see it, was the football tournament, which was um, which was such a beacon of hope for so many girls because they were able to finally come out and do something that they enjoyed without having to worry about the different barriers that, that uh, prevented them from enjoying this work before. Um, Apart from two decades of experience in legal empowerment work, he devoted practically his entire career to social justice and human rights lawyering with the Alternative Law Group. May I now have the honor to invite Mr. Manuel to the podium. Our countries are very different in terms of the, the context, in terms of the social, uh, socio-economic, political context. But I would say Saligan and the members of the consortium, of the Shoki Consortium, are common in their aspirations. They are united in a goal. We have the same, we have the same vision, we have the same goal. We're all looking for justice and we are all linking communities to the justice system, helping the seekers of justice access the justice system, which in most cases uh, become inaccessible. And this is where I go to working together. Saligan, Shoki Consortium members, other organizations engaged in similar legal empowerment work should be working together. Should be working together, we have to share from uh, share our, our experiences, we have to learn from each other, but more importantly, we have to act together. I, am, uh, I, I, I started working uh, this year as Senior Advisor to the Global Legal Empowerment Network. And the Global Legal Empowerment Network is a, is a broad uh, movement of more than uh, 1,600 organizations from more than 300 countries, all engaged in legal empowerment work, similar to what Saliga has been doing, similar to what the Shoki Consortium members are doing. And we hope to learn from each other. But more importantly, we hope to act together, not only as a network, but more importantly, as a movement. And this is where I, I would end. Very recently, we launched a campaign. And this is a campaign for justice, but more importantly, focus on greater financing for legal empowerment work, greater protection for the community, uh, for the grassroots uh, justice defenders. Here, we, we shocking calls them the, the change makers. The change makers are, are not as protected as they should be. The change makers are not uh, given uh, enough uh, financial support by, by governments, by international organizations. And now we are, uh, we, we have recently launched this campaign to ask countries 
around the world to make good the promise of the Sustainable Development Goals, especially of Goal 16, and have grassroots communities pursue, uh, pursue this goal together with the governments. We're very happy that, uh, I'm very happy in particular to learn that Choki is being supported by, uh, among others, by the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And the Netherlands is one of the leading members of the Justice Task Force, which is convened by, by the Pathfinders for, uh, for Justice, uh, uh, Peace and Security. And the objective of this group of countries is to push all, all countries to make good the promise of the Sustainable Development Goals, and specifically focusing, focusing on justice. This is uh, what we can do together among others, aside from learning from each other, aside from sharing experiences, aside from sharing information, we have to work together because we are, wherever we are, whatever the context of the world may be, legal department groups are connected and we are united in our common goal of pursuing justice. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Banner, for sharing your experience about Combat Bow and your opinion on building a legal empowerment movement. We hope the endeavor of spreading barefoot lawyering across the world will continue and encompass an even broader area in the future. We are very honored to have with us Dr. Kamal Hussain. He is a senior advocate of the Supreme Court of Bangladesh and, of course, is known to all of us. He is also the chairperson of Bangladesh Legal Aid and Services Trust. May we please have the honor to invite Dr. Hussain to speak to us. I'm 
উত্তর দিতে পারবে গরিব মানুষ সেখানে চিন্তে করে নাই যে আইনের সহায়তা তারা পেতে পারে এবং আইনজীবীরা তাদেরকে সেভাবে সাহায্য করতে পারে এইগুলো অবশ্যই অগ্রগতি হয়েছে আর এই যে উপস্থিতি থেকে আমি দেখছি যে কত গুণগত একটা পরিবর্তন আছে বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় থেকেও এই ব্যাপারটি গুরুত্ব দেওয়া হচ্ছে শিক্ষক যারা আছে তারাও এর মধ্যে সময় নিচ্ছে আর বিশেষ করে তরুণ আইনজীবীরা অনেকে স্বেচ্ছায় কিন্তু এই মানবাধিকারের ব্যাপারে এগিয়ে আসছে মানবাধিকার সংস্থাগুলো গড়ে উঠেছে যেখানে সবাইকে একটা কাজ করে আনন্দ বোধ করছেন না এটা তো আমরা মানুষের সহায়তা করতে পারছি মানুষের সেবা করতে পারছি তো এই যে আইন সম্পর্কে আইনজীবীদের সম্পর্কে যে একটা ধারণার পরিবর্তন হয়েছে এটা একটা বিরাট অগ্রগতি আমি মনে করি আমি বিশেষ করে আমার যোগ্যতা থেকে যেসব কেস আমি করেছি এই পঞ্চাশ বছরে আমি সে কয়েকটা উল্লেখ করব যে কীভাবে আইনের ভূমিকা আইনজীবীদের ভূমিকা সম্পর্কে এখানে একটা পরিবর্তনের পর পরিবর্তন এসছে প্রথম যেসব ব্যাপারে মনে করা হতো যে এখানে আইনের তো কিছু বিধান নেই কিছু করার হচ্ছে যখন সরকার আইন করে বিধান করে যে শক্তভাবে শাস্তি দেওয়া যাবে মানে বিশেষ করে আমি প্রথম আর্লি কেসের কথা বলি সেই ষাটের দশকের প্রথম দিকে যে রেলওয়ে শ্রমিকরা হাজার হাজার রেলওয়ে শ্রমিক তারা সিদ্ধান্ত নিল তারা ধর্মঘট করে তাদের বেতন বৃদ্ধির ব্যাপারে একটা আন্দোলনে দেখে তখন তো আইয়ুব খানের সরকার তার এখানে গভর্নর ছিলেন মনে খান তারা বললেন যে না কথা প্রশ্ন ওঠে না কোনো ধর্মঘটের রেলওয়ে মধ্যে আমরা একটা আইন করলাম যে যারা স্ট্রাইক করবে সেই স্ট্রাইককে অবৈধ ঘোষণা করা হলো এবং অবৈধ স্ট্রাইক করবে সঙ্গে সঙ্গে তাদেরকে চাকরি থেকে বরখাস্ত হবে আর আর মানে সামরিক ডিসমিশন যেটা বলে কোনো এখানে বিচার বিচার না সেই 
আইন পাশ করানো তার পক্ষে সমর্থন আনা ইত্যাদি তখন প্রচলিত আইনকে দেখা যায় যে কিভাবে ব্যাখ্যা করে এবং থেকে একটু
یه دو کلو رو خونه رو دیدن یه جسم بسر در این شاد داره جمعیه اون رو این قبل دکل کرده باش کرد دکل این دو آن مده رشته بیر میکروب شروع هر من رو برون نگیره از مانوش جسم بسر که هم آمد مانوش کرد از این شماره این دو کلو تو کنو باش کرده یه یک باشستانه با پارسی کنسیش نمالا هستی دیم رایت رو شرط داره اکرا منش رو رایت رو این باوستا کرده چه شماره یه در بکره این این دیر رو نایت رو باید دوه باوستا کرده نشانه این دیر رو شرط داره این هندی گنجه کرده دا برد این این دیشت رو بود شرط لگه و مینه نیت شد رو اکن کنو پستی باشی که دیر با باید گنجه کرده دا Interpretation is very important and uh, the constitutional jurisprudence of Bangladesh has come quite a long way and Dr. Kamal Hussain has been one of the very, uh, one of those persons who actually advocated in favor of uh, the enforcement of the rights and of course the negative enforcement of the policies as well. So thank you Dr. Hussain for being there always. And it's always a pleasure listening to him. Thank you for these inspiring words. Now it's time for our guest of honor. We have among us as the guest of honor, Her Excellency Leoni Margaretha Kulene, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Netherlands. Thank you so much. Before I start, I have to say, I would happily give my time to hear more from Dr. Hussein. Because as my predecessor on this phone said, uh, he's always so inspiring and I learned a lot from him. And I also learned a lot about Bangladesh from that. Honorable guests, distinguished guests, and of course honorable participants, because you're the most important part of this conference. I'm really delighted and I would also like to say, but I don't know if I say it well, Shubo Shokal. I'm delighted to be here today. We want to talk about the issue of rights and choices in relation to access to justice for citizens living in mega cities like Dhaka, with a focus on women and girls. Women's rights and gender equality is a priority for my government. And I, might, and I may say without exaggeration, there is no topic closer to my heart than gender equality and women's rights. Yes, I'm an old-fashioned feminist. For the government of the Netherlands, women's rights are human rights, and human rights are women's rights. The world does not prosper when half of its population is left behind. Equal rights and opportunities are essential for development, prosperity and peace. The ultimate aim is a life free from discrimination and violence for everyone and with a special focus on women and girls. And a world in which everyone can realize their full potential. Both halves. As we are committed to achieving gender equality, and to ensure justice for all, noting that we are to leave no one behind, we need to think about strategies. We need to achieve these ambitious goals, because they are ambitious, but not unattainable. First, we need to, challenge, to identify challenges faced by city dwellers in accessing rights. There are gaps in the justice system. We have to strengthen legal services and we have to review laws to ensure that they are not discriminatory in their content or impact. Women and girls living in megacities are facing multi-dimensional challenges and are particularly vulnerable in violent, to violence closely linked with their access or rather non-access to health rights and choices. Existing research shows that women and girls are unable to claim all their rights. Lack of information, awareness, and access to remedies and services results in the loss of valuable opportunities. 
and denial of rights equally guaranteed to women and girls as citizens, at least officially. But that's, alas, not always the case. Discrimination is the basis for violence against women and for unequal opportunities for women to access services. Addressing all forms of gender-based violence, including child marriage, sexual harassment and domestic violence, is key to enhancing gender equality. I'm very proud that we have been able to support the Shopping Project. I'm proud of what they do. It has established a model for providing frontline services at community level, an innovation in the urban context. Through its change makers and paralegals, selected, selected from confident and capable young women and men from their own community. It is making a difference in the lives of city dwellers, providing them with access to information. Justice and health services focused on sexual and reproductive health rights and linking them to existing government and non-government services. This intervention has helped in building the capacity and knowledge of women and girls in communities across the city and creating opportunities. Because they do that because it's their own community and that's also why it's much more valuable than a bunch of strangers coming in. Social change only happens through collective action. And that is why I'm so pleased with this conference, bringing together experts from different disciplines, government, community leaders and activists, to share experiences about policies and laws that obstruct or enhance gender equality. The conference has a good title, Gender, Right and Choices. In our government, in my government's policy, rights and choices are pivotal for enhancing gender equality. I think by now you have heard all of the worldwide movement called She Decides. It started last year in the Netherlands. It's an, an initiative that has evolved into a global political movement, which is guided by the vision as articulated in the She Decides manifesto. That we have to strive for a new normal where girls and women decide about their bodies, their lives and their futures, without question. Because when she decides, the world is better, stronger, and safer. Thank you, Donald. Thank you. The most encouraging thing from uh, the encouraging remarks of Ms. Leoni was gender equality might be hard to attain, but it was not. It is not unattainable. Thank you for embracing this conference as the guest of honor and for your continuing support to Bangladesh as we move forward. We are delighted and honored to have among us Professor Dr. Rahmatullah as the chair of this session. Dr. Rahmatullah is the dean of the faculty of law and a professor in the department of law under the same faculty. Now for the closing remarks, may I please invite Dr. Rahmatullah. Uh, honorable Dr. Chairperson Plus and legal, uh, legendary Bangladesh, Her Excellency, Delhi Margaret, Ambassador, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Netherlands, Dr. Sarah Hussain, Honorary Executive Director Plus, Marion Mendel, Senior Advocate Global Legal Empowerment. Network Philippines, Fari Ahmed, Sinar Ashwet, Akhtar Imam and Ashwet, Dr. Feder Zahan, Department of Public Administration, University of Dhaka, and President of the Honorable Chairman, Department of Law, University of Dhaka, my dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's a uh, wonderful opportunity for us to have in such a useful conference organized by the Department of Law, University of Dhaka and Plaza. Of course, as it says, whoever you are, whenever you live, all the decisions that you made about your body is yours. 
And when we talk about gender rights and choices, access to justice in a mega city, then we have to go through some of the reports made by Action 8 in last year and Thompson Raptor Foundation. Thompson Raptor Foundation, they made a study on 19 mega cities in the world on four basic issues like access to healthcare, uh, cultural practices, economic opportunity, opportunities, and sexual violence. And according to, to that report, Dhaka holds the seventh position as post mega city. Cairo, last in the list, followed by Karachi, Kansasa, and New Delhi. And again, if we go to the report made by Oxenate in uh, 2017, it says that 47.5% women, they do not have any access to healthcare and they are victim of uh, sexual violence. 88% of women, they reported to be harassed in public places, markets, and in the streets. Interestingly, 81% women, they preferred not to seek any assistance from the law enforcement agency due to fear of further harassment. If this is the picture, then we must understand the gender situation in mega cities, especially in Dhaka. Why this happens? Because of the Dhaka, as uh, our noted uh, Honorable Dr. Kamal is saying, Dhaka is one of the most uh, dense cities in Asia. And people are coming from different corners of the country to pursue their social economic opportunities. And hence, they are here as public people and without any address. They are living in slums. They are living in community without having any social services. And they have no access to justice and to services. As a result, they are completely deprived of their basic rights, their fundamental rights, as well as access to any benefits that are very much essential for citizenry. When we claim that Bangladesh is developing, we have so many developments that we are going to be uh, considered as middle income country. But I think this is a matter of proud, but at the same time, it should not be sustainable until and unless we do not address the issues of women, especially their rights and their protection. As it is said by our excellence, that women are uh, discriminated. They have no right and access to the services necessary for the urban people. The government has to take into consideration to address the challenges that urban women in Dhaka city faces. And I think the program that we are here has to address the challenges and to map up some strategies to address the issue. As an academician and dean of the faculty of law, I can say that we will think how to engage our students for community services. And by that, maybe we will get some community lawyers, as Dr. Kamal Hussain noted. If students to be engaged 
with the communities, then probably the community people will have their leader. They will understand their lackings and weaknesses, and by that, they, are, they will be aware of their rights. We need to raise our voice, we need to demand our rights, and we have to fight legally for the rights of the people. And with this sort notes, I thank you, everyone, to be here. And I hope our two days in the world will be successful and will focus for success in the days to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Abutuma, for the closing remarks. This closing remarks officially closes the opening session, but also opens the gateway for the next sessions. May I please have your attention? Before you move on to our next session, we are going to have a tea break.